we were supposed to do a dual Facebook Live with Ada Lloyd today, and uh, we weren't able to make that happen due to technology, but I didn't want to leave you hanging. And I wanted to uh, come in and talk about getting more done best practices. I thought that would be a good topic uh, because I know a lot of my clients struggle with it too, is like, how do I get all this stuff done? I mean, you guys should literally see my to-do list. I have like three pages of to-do list. This one alone came to me in the middle of the night. Uh, I get up and I go to the bathroom and all these ideas come in and I don't know if that happens to you, but literally the other night I had to come to my office and write down, it was a whole page of things that were going on in my brain that I didn't want to forget, right? I don't know how many of you have done that. Raise your hand, comment below if you've done that and gotten up in the middle of the night and made a to-do list. Well, I know that in order to get all of this stuff done in a timely manner, there's various things that I have to do in order to make that happen. Uh, number one, I have to delegate. I have to delegate certain things uh, in my business. There is no humanly way possible for me to be doing the things that I need to do to get where I need to go as fast as I wanna get there all by myself. And so that's the number one thing I had to realize many years ago uh, was to delegate. And I have a lot of clients who are new to delegating. My, you might be also like, who do I hire my first time hiring a virtual assistant? Where do I find and what do I have them do? And how do I hire the right person? What questions do I ask, right? These are the questions that I get asked all the time. And I would say uh, in a quick note, the number one thing you wanna do is um, know that you probably need more than one person. Usually it's not one person that will do everything you need done. It might be two or three. So be open to the possibility that you might have this person do this thing and this person do these tasks um, and just be open to that. Also, always hire people that, uh, the number one question I ask when I'm hiring someone is what's your favorite thing to do with clients or for clients? What's your favorite thing to do? And then just shut up and let them talk. And the, the things that come out of their mouth right then and there are the things that I will hire them for. I will not hire them for other things, even if I can. And they say, oh, I can do that too. No, no, I don't do that because you want somebody who's passionate about what they're doing for you, even if it's data entry or making phone calls or technology work, you want someone who's passionate about that task. The second thing uh, that you wanna do to get more done is automate. Automate and systematize things in your business through your website. I just did a whole training for this on another group uh, for an hour all about websites, how to tweak your websites and what you need to do to have better systems, better functionality, online forms, things to make it easy, not only for you to run your business smoother, but for visitors and your customers and prospects so that they can find the information they need and get more information uh, as fast, right? Because we have an instant world around us. And it's not just about your website, the systems and the processes. It's about things that you're doing day to day uh, and that kind of thing. And it could be automating some things the way you take, uh, handle new customers. There's a lot of different systems that I teach at my events and in, in programs. I'm happy to talk to you guys about when you come to the International Entrepreneur Calls. These are just a couple ideas of things you can actually come to a call and get information on how to do it. Um, some of the other things about getting more done is I'm, I used to not be good at this. I used to be the multitask queen, right? And I, I still kind of do quite a few things, but the only reason I do that is because technology is slowing me down. So if I'm waiting for a site to load or, or a video to upload or something like that, then I'm moving on to another task until that thing's done and then I'll go back. I just, I have to keep busy doing stuff. But I'm I'm a bite-sized baby step girl too these days. So I will just take a chunk of thing, something that needs to get done. Um, so in a way, I will say, okay, I'm gonna write this book. What's the first thing that needs to happen? Well, I have to write the back cover copy or I have to write the sales page of selling the book before I even write the book. Yes, I know, that seems odd, but that's how I think. Um, or if, uh, Sometimes, so sometimes it's better to do the bite-sized baby step first of the task that needs to get done. Uh, other times, it's good to time block. And sometimes, like I have a project that I'm going to be working on in the next couple weeks, where I'm going to time block probably a three-hour period one day and maybe two hours and another day so I can just immerse myself. Turn off the phones, turn off the notifications, uh, shut down 
you know, the, the basically social media while I focus on that project so I stay focused, right? And make sure I eat prior to that and have plenty to drink so I don't have to get up a much um, and go, because what happens when sometimes I get into a project, I'm like, oh, I got to do this thing. And I was like, oh, but I'm hungry. I need to go eat first. So I'm going to go eat first and then I'll come back and do this thing, <laughs> right? We, we sometimes trick ourselves. So make sure you're prepared to, to stay focused for a good amount of time if you're doing a time block kind of a thing. Um, another thing that I'm really super good at and why I get more done is that I I am really super organized. I'm organized in my house. You should see my house. Everything has its place. If my kid leave, or my husband leave their shoes out in the living room, guess what? Oh, what do you need to put away before you go to school or whatever, right? So everything's organized for the most part at almost all, all the time. Uh, the With an occasion of a laundry basket sitting out with a bunch of clothes in it that needs to get folded, right? That's that's normal, but um, everything has a filing cabinet or a place in the cupboard or the closet for my business stuff. It's not just all laying all over the place, right? Even my trunk, I keep my trunk of my car pretty organized with uh, books and order forms and signs and things that I need to take to events and stuff like that. My trunk is pretty organized and my back seat. People are always uh, shocked that my car is actually pretty empty, you know, even though I go to a lot of events and do a lot of networking and stuff. So staying organized. Um, my desk is the only thing I have a main challenge with um, is I have a couple different working files, right? But I really try hard because I just at the end of last year, I cleaned it all off and it was like so felt so felt so good. And so it's starting to pile up again. I'm starting to get a little, mm -mm, you know, <laughs> so I'm I'm really making an effort that at the end of every week before the weekend to just really clean it off. Uh, and so I would really urge you to do that too because if we're in a disorganized space um, with our office space or our desk or our car, if we live, you know, if we work in our car a lot, um, it's just going to hamper your energy level, your excitement, motivation level, as well as your procrastination uh, tendencies. Um, and then finally, uh, to get more done, best practices, I would say you have to watch uh, your boundaries. You have to set some good boundaries for yourself and your family. Like I'm in an, an office that we actually had to build a wall in this house when we bought it two years ago because it was a big formal living room and a dining room and we didn't need that. We just like our family room and I needed an office. So we built a wall, but we didn't build a door. <laughs> and because it's a really open uh, area to, to come in, like right by the front door, we didn't build a door. And that is becoming a little bit of an, an issue um, now that my husband is also working from home. So my voice, especially on Zoom calls and videos and things, projects through the house. And he's a a voiceover artist and so he needs quiet to record things right and do um, stuff so we're we're he's way back in the bedroom and I'm way up at the front of the house and we're making it work but it would be great to have a door and or people could just walk in anytime and start talking to me when I'm in the middle of something and you know we got to set our boundaries and they know usually not to bug me until I come out of the office um, or if you know, if I need to talk to him, even I will say, do you have a minute and we can have a conversation. So if uh, you got to set your boundaries with the people in your household, your office space, uh, perhaps with I, I know one client who had her sister, or her mom, I can't remember, they would she would call her like four or five times a day. If my mom called me four or five times a day, I don't know what she would talk to me about, number one, but there's no way she would do that. Uh, but if she did, I would be like, look, I, well, first of all, I wouldn't answer the phone <laughs> uh, that often um, because that's just silly. You just don't answer the, you know, if you need to set boundaries with your loved ones, then you gotta do what you gotta do to get shit done, so. Those are some tips for you today. I hope this was helpful, you guys. I am here for you if you need anything. Remember, our next IEN call is this Friday, February 7th uh, at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. And there's three calls this month, so make sure if that doesn't work for you, 
uh, this Friday the 7th, then you look on the Facebook pinned post or your IEN members only web page and uh, make sure you get all the calls in there. I'm adding new calls all the time. And I do have a couple live events that you're welcome to attend. Uh, the Love and Money Live event is in April in Sacramento. I really would encourage you guys to really try to get here if you can. It's three days of working on your business and you guys can all get super good discounts. And so make sure you look for the posts in the, in the membership about Love and Money Live. Um, or just ask me if you're not sure where to find that information because I want to give you a discount code. Uh, and I have author training coming up uh, that is for anyone. Uh, and it's um, you guys get a couple hundred dollars off of that one as well. So make sure if you're interested in publishing a book or, or doing your own book this year and learning the whole process of getting published and how to find all the resources you need as affordably as possible, that one starts February 10th. So February 10th we start, so you need to be registered for that. And I only have room for about 10 more people, okay? So that's what I got for today, and uh, have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you soon.